Welcome to On the Brink, a fresh lens to take you and your business to new heights. I'm Andy Simon, your host and your guide. And my job is to help you see, feel, and think in new ways so you can get off the brink and soar again. It's not a time when things are easy or simple. Fast has become the new new. You've got to be really quick, agile, adaptive, and begin to see things that are all around you. Remember, your mind fights you. It does exactly what it thinks you want it to do. And you don't ever see all the stuff that's happening here. It feels dangerous and unsafe, and that's really where you want to be going. So today, I want to help you do that. I have with me today, Maria Lisa Bowen. She is just a fantastic woman with a great background and a new book. And I'm going to talk to you today about her book. Let me tell you about her, and then she will tell you about her own journey. Her name is Maria Lisa Bowen. She's a scientist and oncology clinical development director. And you're going to say to me, really? So you're bringing her to us so we can help get off the brink? I said, well, just listen carefully. She has almost 30 years of pharmaceutical experience. Her vast exper expertise in a variety of disciplines is a real, real benefit for us on a topic that you probably aren't familiar with. She holds knowledge in quality assurance in pharmaceutical manufacturing, clinical cancer research, program management, talent management. We have a very talented woman here with us today. She is very curious. It's so interesting. So many of my podcasters recently are talking about curiosity. Patrick Van Gorder spoke about curiosity. Curiosity, the curiosity quotient has become in vogue or it's truly very important because we're all going through change. And so today we're going to do really take a look at her new book as well. It's called Reflect, a perspective on understanding your reality and becoming unstuck. I'll say that again. Think about how timely this is. Reflect, a perspective on understanding your reality and becoming unstuck. And it's available on Amazon. It just came out and it's ready for you to go buy and enjoy. Maria, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very excited to be here. Well, good. Tell the listener about who is Maria and what's your journey and how did you get to write a book? It's all sort of Florida. Like you're a pharmaceutical and you're in cancer research and you have a book on called Reflect. I love the title. Please help us help you. What's it all about? Well, um, this book is really about, it's, it's very foundational. It's just about um, trying to understand what reality means to each of us and how we can kind of use that to our advantage to get out of a rut or, or you know, just get unstuck, really. And um, I, I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for almost 30 years. Um, and I always thought, you know, I had two jobs. One is the work that I do every day. And the other one, uh, well, I, I'm kind of a people scientist. I always have been um, since I was a little girl. And, you know, just constantly, I'm just fascinated with and, and always thinking about like those things that, um, you know, why are, why are we here? You know, I, I remember being I, four years old, not four, I, I probably was four, just thinking about the strangest <laughs> things. Probably most kids don't think about like death and <laughs> um, well, well, I don't our know. meaning, <laughs> our purpose, why we're what here. Are, yeah, it sounds absolutely. like you were reflective, like your book title. Yes, yes. So I'm um, a, a clinical scientist and also a people scientist. So, <laughs> and that's why I wrote the book. I think um, you know, going through the pharmaceutical industry, you know, it's 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 um, very intense, um, especially in oncology. Um, and it's it's it really gave me a really like a, a fabulous platform to to really kind of understand people and how we all work together. And, you know, this whole business these days about what's right and what's wrong and, you know, um, so many companies and, and uh, work environments, no matter where you're at, everything's like siloed, you know, it's like your perspective versus everyone else's. And I think that sometimes gets us stuck because we identify with what's going on outside of us versus, you know, re really connecting with what is meaningful to us. And so, you know, sometimes we will, um, you know, we'll do things that because people expect us to do them versus doing them because we love doing it, you know? And I have to be honest, um, writing this, I don't know why I did it. Um, I think it was kind of in the cards all along, but it really, uh, it almost enriched what I did, what I do every day. Um, 
I always, I, I'm a people pleaser, you know? And I finally admitted it. And an angry <laughs> one sometimes, a resentful one, but nonetheless, uh, someone who, um, you know, I'll go out of my way to help other people um, at the expense of my own needs. So I think a lot of my turmoil, it kind of caught up to me. <laughs> I'm curious, knowing a little bit about you and yeah. what you're telling us here, how did you get into the pharmaceutical business? You know, what was your journey like? Yeah, um, well, uh, <laughs> here comes my brothers. My brothers, um, I have four older brothers. The oldest one uh, was in pharmaceuticals and he kind of introduced me. Um, he was already, you know, a, a chemist for probably a decade. And um, my first job was in the lab in a molecular biology lab. So it was, you know, it was such a wonderful journey, like all the way through. I worked in the lab for about a decade and, or not quite, about eight years, and then got into clinical research. And um, within the first year of uh, clinical, I think it was two, uh, 2002, 2001 or 2002, I um, ended up, you know, kind of focusing on oncology. So I've been in that um, area uh, of clinical research uh, for a long time. <laughs> um, <laughs> And actually took a little bit of time and worked with my brother uh, at one point, you know, because it, it just a change and, you know, something yeah. to do. I came back into clinical research um, and that's that's what I'm continuing to do. I love it. Well, I think that's really beautiful. And in the process, you decided you had a story to tell because books are stories. So yeah. let's go into this story that you wanted to tell. Is this autobiographical? Is this data? Is it reflective? You know, give us some perspective of what you've captured in the story you told there. Right. So, you know, it wasn't exactly just one story, um, but it was more or less um, everything going wrong in my life at once. You know, um, my my mom, uh, she had Alzheimer's, uh, you know, watching her progress and um, just changing jobs. I was, you know, what, whatever was going on at the time, it, it kind of... I, all these problems were popping up and I'm like why me you know why is this always happening to me I was so worried about what was going on on the outside so got through it everything you know I, I survived like most of us right and just as the years went by every time I found myself in a, in a tough spot I I kind of get super curious and just why am I why is this happening and I think that's kind of what led to it. So, you know, the last time I was in a, a tough situation, like a really tough situation, I saw things from a different perspective. I, um, I didn't make excuses. I, I didn't, you know, walk away from any opportunities or, or situations that were bad. I just kind of stuck there and I, I just walked through it and it was life-changing. Um, and by doing that, um, I was also able to help other people around me because it, you you actually allow yourself to become vulnerable, you know, and that's really the key. That's allowing yourself to become vulnerable. So um, I, an opportunity came up um, by accident. I took a took a chance, and you know, someone contacted me to write a book, and I did it. And I realized that it was perfect timing because um, your question, what what is it really about? It it's um, there are definitely examples in here but it's really to help other people. It's kind of um, uh, more of a self-help book and it's not like a bunch of steps, although you, can't, you probably can break it out to, to steps. The biggest step is to just try and understand yourself better. And um, so I walked through you know, what reality is and why it's not so reliable, um, our, our own reality that we create as well as other people's because their views and perspectives and fears and hurts and experiences and everything else that um, you know, they go through, they almost project onto you and you do the same, you project your story onto them and you kind of, you see what you want to see really. So whatever you're focusing on, that's what you're going to see. If you're giving advice to someone after you just went through like a horrible marriage, you're going to tell someone that's looking to get married, don't do it. It's horrible, right? <laughs> it's be perspective. And we have to realize that that's, it's just not reality. You got to go inside and see what it is. So there's no problem with take, taking information from other people, but take what you need and leave the rest behind, you know? So wow. it's, it's kind of I do that. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really quite fascinated because we've learned from the neurosciences and the cognitive sciences that your mind yeah. does exactly what it thinks you want it to do. Yeah. 
And that story in there is like a movie set and you live every day that reality in your mind, but it's only an illusion of what reality is. And now the question you're saying is, rather than let others define you, begin to understand who's inside. Can you share with us a little of the process of self-discovery? Because I think this is really the essence of what you're at. <laughs> yes. So in my spare time, I love I love to read physics books. I just, I don't know why. I, it's just I, maybe because, you know, it, it goes down to the basics. Like, what are we here for? And I, for years, I had no clue what I was reading. I just kept reading, I just fascinated. And also my mom read a lot, but she had tons of psychology books and, you know, Carl Jung and all these, you know, different uh, psychologists and self-help. And um, I think between that and, and just being super curious, I really, um, kind of pull from a bunch of different uh, areas, you know, it, it's not only what I do every day and those experiences, but what I read, um, you know, just about reality and, and, and physics and also, you know, uh, I, I think of uh, Rumi, the, the, uh, the philosopher, the 11th century philosopher, right? He, I, I never heard of him before. <laughs> I, I never heard of him before. And just over the last year I've been, or, or two maybe, he's been popping up a lot. And um, that, like, I, it influenced me so much. Um, all these different pieces coming together kind of made the whole picture for me a little bit more digestible and a little, I, I was able to see things a little more clearly for myself. Yeah. In the process of seeing more clearly for yourself and then sharing it with others, what have you discovered about yourself? Can you share it? Yes, yes. So the thing that I think I really discovered about myself is just kind of focusing on on what's going on inside and paying attention to your feelings, you know, is super important. Um, growing up after four boys, I always pushed my, or I thought I was pushing it aside. Everybody probably thought I was crazy and emotional and you know, all that stuff, but I, I thought I was pushing things away and I used anger as a way of covering up hurt and pain. And, um, and so I kind of pushed that outside of me. Like I love to be creative too, um, but no, I have to go the science route, you know? Like, so I always kind of pushed the things that really drew, you know, came natural to me and, and kind of pushed them away. So being able to be vulnerable, accept the things that make you happy and accept the things, um, you know, like kind of internal, like look, look inside yourself and understand, you know, maybe the, the triggers, why are you being triggered by certain things? Mm -hmm. And just take a little bit of time to, to think about it instead of running away from it will get you so far. It doesn't even take long. It's just that focus. And we're all so all over the place these days, you know, we have the phones and the computers and everything at our fingertips. So we never take time out. You got to take time out and, and think about, you know, your life. <laughs> well, and I think that's very profound and very important now. As you're thinking about this, in part, it's reflective, as your title is, going backwards. How is it intentional for going forward? How do you now build a life that is um, more reflective, more open, where your vulnerabilities are okay. Um, and can you share with us some of your perspective there? Yeah, yeah. It's it's just really allowing myself to to kind of be vulnerable. Um, and um, I think I think one of the biggest things that um, that really kind of made a difference. Uh, you know, I can relate one one example from the book. Um, I was not in a good space. Everything was going wrong. This is going back to the, the, the first conversation we had. Everything was going wrong. Um, I wasn't myself at work. I, I was kind of doing things to please other people, um, doing what was what I thought was expected of me, even though my heart wasn't in it. And it it it's not that I didn't love what I was doing. I just, I was distracted, you know? And um, it was time for my review. And my, my boss, who was really, you know, tough, tough, tough boss, <laughs> um, wasn't afraid to tell you, you know, what, what was wrong or, or who, who was around to hear it. It didn't matter. And it was time for my review. I get in there and he just ripped me apart. He ripped me apart. And I thought to myself, what am I going to do? He's right. You know, 
I could have cried. I could have walked away. I could have made excuses. I could have, you know, uh, blamed other people. That's a big one, you know, uh, bl blaming blame other people. Blame and complain. I got to blame and complain. Yeah. So instead of blaming, I just stood there and I listened to him. I actually listened to the words that were coming out of his mouth. And I kind of surrendered in that moment and um, had no clue what I was going to say or how I was going to respond. And he kind of said to me, well, you know, what, what do you think? And I looked him straight in the eye and said, you're right. You're absolutely right. Can you help me? Ooh. He went from complete rigidity to like a big snow puff, <laughs> a big puffball of, uh, of uh, kindness. Like he just, his whole disposition changed. And he, he said, I would be delighted. You know, I would absolutely love to help you. And from that day forward, you know, everything still going wrong. I was able to kind of be myself mm -hmm. in front of the person because there was nothing left. There was nowhere to hide. Mm -hmm. And allowing yourself to be that vulnerable is, is not hard. It's a choice, you know? Did you find that as he helped you, your attitude towards the help was different also? That you were a sponge learning or, you know, how did your persona change as well? My focus changed. Instead of wondering, like, am I, you know, what are people thinking? You know, am I doing this right? I was just curious. I allowed that little child to come out and be happy about what I was doing, what was right in front of me. Yeah, I learned a ton with this, um, with this MD. And um, even several years later, I, you know, I ran into him at a big conference and, you know, it could have been a very different situation. He literally, you know, greeted me with a big warm um, hug and, and, hey, how, how are you? And started to go and tell everyone, you know, um, all, the, all the nice things that I did uh, when I worked there. So it, it was just, uh, it could have been very different, but when you allow yourself to be real, yeah, real, really who you are, not what other people expect you to be or what you think you are, <laughs> um, <laughs> think rather than feel, um, that it opens you up to really get in touch with what makes you tick. It also sounds like you don't have to do it alone. This illustrative story was very it's profound because alone you were okay, you were living, but together with this gentleman, you could grow into bigger. And so belonging and being bigger is important here because others can help you see yourself through a fresh lens, begin to reflect on who you are and begin to really grow. Is that what you're saying as well? Absolutely. And whether you're on the giving side or the receiving side, you know, um, I had also several direct reports, um, you know, and I'm just thinking about the review period, being able to seriously, um, you know, talk to somebody and let your guard down, they're automatically going to let their guard down, right? Yeah. So that, that's a big thing, especially today. I mean, you don't have to agree with everything that everyone says, but if you give yourself a little bit of a chance to literally listen to them and not formulate or judge or blame yourself or, or yeah. you know, the other, yeah. you're, you put yourself in a space to, to really hear. And that's the difference, you know? So, you know, you can, you can really uh, get to the heart of the matter and, and also having a good intention, having good intentions. Um, I go through pretty much, I, I think I cover every topic in the book. Um, it's, it's just about 175 pages, but there's everything from, you know, understanding your triggers to, um, you know, kind of changing things around and, and realizing that everything is dynamic. Like everything in our lives is, is it's not static you know life keeps moving things keep changing you you can take that opportunity to change in a direction that you intend rather than having things happen to you and i think the way you do that is really going inside and understanding what is important to you and allowing yourself to be complete you know um i, I mentioned before about the creativity um I incorporate that into my job now. And I have, I don't know if I've ever done better. Like I, it just enriched what I do every day. And it's, it's so powerful. And then people, you know, get excited around you because you're excited, <laughs> you know? And it it's sounds just, like your life has been a journey of hurdles and jumping over them and being transformed and blossoming into a beautiful woman. This is so cool. Um, we're just about ready to wrap up our conversation. 
I bet there are a couple of things you don't want the listener to forget. Any things you want to share, please? Yes. Silly but true. Um, when you start to get nervous and feel, you know, any anything that feels off, don't don't run away from it. Take a second to really ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? Sometimes you don't even know. Um, but if you give yourself a few moments instead of turning your head and distracting yourself and you know, saying, oh, it's nothing. It's, and you know, no, it is something. And it's going to get you any little clue that you can unearth about yourself is going to push you off in the right direction. So just, you know, that's one, one big piece of advice is just allow yourself to understand and process what you're going through. That's not a small idea. That's a big idea. Um, because you're, you're suggesting that people trust their feelings. Remember, we decide with the heart and with the eyes but not with the head as much as we think we do. And so this is a great time for you to reflect on those, those feelings that don't feel quite right and why. And as opposed to fight them or flee them or appease them, delete them, listen to your heart, it's okay. There's something coming to you and your vulnerability, you know, it's sometimes that word quite curious has become quite cliched. Don't think of it that way. It's okay to feel and it's okay to think about yourself through a fresh lens. It's okay. You know, you're growing and you're changing. You know, as Maria shared her story, I think all of us have had that situation where, well, we thought we were doing okay, but it really wasn't okay enough. Or, you know, we really don't understand expectations and hadn't managed them particularly well. There's something that disconnected. And all of a sudden you needed a little bit of a, uh, you're not doing so well, honey. Let's see if we can help you get better. And, and then all of a sudden you bloomed because you didn't know what you didn't know. This has been such fun. If they want to buy the book, where shall they get it? So right now it's um, being sold only on Amazon. Um, and you can also check out my website. It's www.marialisabowen.com. The book again is titled, and we'll put it up. It's Reflect a Perspective on Understanding Your Reality and Becoming Unstuck. There it is. Hey, that's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that's that's a great cover uh, I think this has been such a pleasure I hope the book does very well and I hope our audience our listeners and our viewers can really understand what Maria's passion is and her purpose is to help you like I am to see feel and think in new ways so you can find the best that you can be am I right absolutely <laughs> well, I want to thank you for joining us I want to thank my audience for coming and for pushing us into the top 5% of podcasts globally. And that's really an honor. And I'm, I'm delighted. Both of my books now have won Axiom Best Business Book Awards. My Rethink, Smashing the Myths of Women in Business, won the 2022 uh, Bronze Best Business Book for Women in Business category. And On the Brink, one that's the 2017 Axiom Bronze Best Business Book. I can only tell you that my books are designed to help you see, feel, and think in new ways so you can become the best that you can be. And I think that this is a time for embracing change, making change your friend, instead of fleeing it or fearing it. There's no reason to be the times they are changing and embrace them because they're not going away. You can't put that genie back in the bottle. It's going to keep coming at you. And it's a great time to be fast and agile and adaptive and have fun. You can reach me, bring me your ideas at info at andysimon.com. I love to hear from my listeners. You bring me all kinds of good people to interview, like Maria. And I'm, I'm delighted to share her with you today. Maria, thanks again for joining me. Thank you so much. And congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. And congratulations on your book. All right, everybody, we'll say goodbye. Have a wonderful day, and thanks for joining us.